Management of Peyton Foramen Valley in Cryptogenic Ischemic Stroke. A 45-year-old man presents with a right middle cerebral artery stroke of unclear etiology. Vascular imaging and continuous cardiac monitoring were unremarkable. A transesophageal echocardiogram demonstrated a patent foramen of valley with large right-to-left shunting. Lower extremity dopplers and pelvic imaging did not reveal any deep vein thromboses. A hypercoagulable workup performed also did not reveal any abnormalities. What should be the next step in management? Some questions to think about include... Does percutaneous closure of a PFO in patients with a cryptogenic ischemic stroke reduce the stroke recurrence risk compared to medical therapy alone? Does anticoagulation in patients with a PFO and cryptogenic stroke reduce the stroke recurrence risk compared to closure and antiplatelet therapy or antiplatelet therapy alone? About 15 to 25 percent of the adult population has a PFO. There is a higher rate of PFOs in patients with cryptogenic strokes than in the general population, suggesting an association between PFOs and ischemic strokes. The most likely mechanism by which an ischemic stroke can occur in the setting of a PFO is if there is a right-to-left shunt, allowing for a thrombus to travel into the arterial circulation via a phenomenon known as paradoxical embolism. Other proposed mechanisms have included intrinsic thrombus formation in the PFO, as well as higher rates of atrial arrhythmias. There are currently three main treatment options for those with PFOs and cryptogenic stroke. These options are 1. PFO closure and antiplatelet therapy, 2. Antiplatelet therapy alone, and 3. Anticoagulation alone. In the last few years, six randomized controlled trials have looked at the efficacy of percutaneous closure of PFO and cryptogenic strokes. These studies suggest that for carefully selected patients under the age of 60, especially those with an embolic appearing stroke and a large shunt, with an otherwise unremarkable workup for stroke etiology, closure of PFO followed by antiplatelet therapy can reduce recurrent stroke risk as compared with antiplatelet therapy alone. However, with PFO closure, there is a small risk of periprocedural events as well as development of atrial fibrillation. The data on anticoagulation use in PFO is not as robust. Compared with anticoagulation, the available data shows that PFO closure and antiplatelet therapy may decrease the risk of ischemic stroke. Patients on anticoagulation were also more likely to suffer a major bleeding event. In patients not eligible for PFO closure with cryptogenic stroke, available data is not clear as to whether they should be on anticoagulation or antiplatelet therapy. Data suggests possibly a lower ischemic stroke risk with anticoagulation, but with wide confidence intervals. Since clinical assessment of transient ischemic attacks is more subjective, most meta-analyses and practice advisories address confirmed ischemic strokes only. Prior to consideration of PFO closure in the young patient with an embolic stroke of undetermined etiology, it is imperative to evaluate for other etiologies of stroke with vascular imaging, echocardiography, prolonged rhythm monitoring, and hypercoagulable studies. It is only after these evaluations have been performed, along with collaborative assessments of benefits and risks by both a neurologist and a cardiologist, should there be consideration for closure of a PFO if it were thought to be the etiology of the stroke. To learn more about the management of PFOs in cryptogenic ischemic stroke, including practice advisories and meta-analyses of the recent randomized controlled trials mentioned, please see the course resources.